Hello, so I'm Hiko Simon, geek YouTuber, and this is... Uh, Tehina Gaijin, ace producer. He's an ace producer. He said it himself. You see how up himself he is? Yeah. <laughs> so he's the maker. Uh, you, what do you like to call it? Do you like to call it Hina Gaijin? Or what I really like matters? to call it Hina Gaijin, but we, we had this conversation the I other like night, I like what really we? matters. Yeah, we do. And I know a lot of other people said, I love that what really matters. It really resonated with me. I, I guess really the reason I like to call it Hina Gaijin is because I see the big picture. The big picture in my mind is something more than just that one show. Sure. Um, but that's the hook, isn't it? Yeah. What really matters. Because yeah. I think we're all passionate about doing what we're passionate about. And right. that's what gets people. So everyone who saw it and who knew that I knew you and everything and, and discovered your channel through making that, and they, everyone was saying, how in the hell did you do that? And I said, it'd be really great to get Ace on sometime and extract all of his secrets from him. So that's what we're going to do today. So stay tuned. <laughs> How did you do it? We've got dancing man. The, yes, the dancing man was here again. How did I do it? Um, okay, the, first of all, I want to start by saying yep. this guy's the man, really. When we launched that, it was amazing. I w went home on a Friday night. We had like a couple of hundred views. And then and I was sitting there feeling sorry for myself a little bit, really, <laughs> watching TV going, well, oh, YouTube Inst sucks. Instant viral sensation dreams shattered. And then I got an email from, from Hiko and saying, wow, this is really cool. Love this. And I saw a comment there. And then suddenly it starts going up. And then your mate Victor gets involved as well. And the next morning I woke up and it was like, oh, my God. The more We had like <laughs> 800 subscribers up from about 20 the night before or something. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. But then I also remember later on, about a week or a couple of weeks later, you said that, hold on, sometimes... Uh, People get a little bit, what, what, what was the word you used? They, they start to feel empty after this little ride ends uh, going up. Yeah. And I, I definitely felt that. I mean, yeah. I, I need a little bit more Hiko magic there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 it's a bug, isn't it? And the fact is that... It was very cool. It was very cool. So thank you. No. That's well, what I was wanting to say. So here it is from my perspective. Um, I always love shouting out and supporting new channels and stuff like that and if someone tweets me and says hey man i'm starting a new channel about japan can you tweet my video and i'll, I'll give you a freebie sure i'll tweet you out or whatever I'll, I'll watch the video and you know but but nine times out of ten um you know it's like me in the beginning it's clumsy awkward guy with a web camera doing a video but you know yeah keep keep, keep at it it's definitely you know a bit of moral support and all that stuff but honestly speaking and, and victor talks about this as well when you've actually got someone who's actually good you know you see someone oh this person's gonna like this person's going to get re really big and it's actually kind of a thrill from my perspective to get in early so I can take all the credit. But honestly speaking, to be the guy who recommended something that was really awesome, that, 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 that gives me cred, right? So as soon as when I, when I, I knew it was going to be awesome, but when I saw what you did and what I loved about that series was that, um, you know, well, you didn't do the, the cliche. It was, it was a bit left field. They were topics I would never have guessed or, or thought about. They yeah. were new and informative to me and it was really well put together so as soon as i saw that it's like well okay it's a mate and i'm plugging in I, and hell i'll take some of the credit for this channel growing but the thing is i knew as soon as people would watch that that other people would recommend it and other people you know it, it would take it on its own life so for me you know to give it a little bit of a nudge all i did was give it a nudge in the beginning but it went well, under it its own wonderful. steam after that so how did you do it i mean so well, yeah. let's go through the process like how did you create the idea for it how did you plan it out and how did you go about shooting it and how do you go about editing it in, in two minutes in two minutes. Okay. okay. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> look, look, it's, you can take more time. It's, you know. it's, it's, really, it's really quite simple. I, I think myself the most important thing, and let me just say again, like we said at the top, disclaimer, um, arms. I'm no expert. We've all got arms. <laughs> Opinions are like arms. This is my opinion. Um, if you disagree, then, then go ahead and disagree and, and tell us what you think. That's really cool. That's what YouTube's great for. So my opinion is, is that Personally, and I know a lot of people who are going to disagree with what I have to say. Back Just in say it, man. That's, you know, being disagreeable is good for views. So, <laughs> I think the number one thing for me is all about planning. Yeah. It's to make ah, sure that, to begin so with, <laughs> you, you, you start with an idea that you love. Yeah. Um, for me, the idea of 
so many 90 percent to 80 percent whatever people sit in gray cubicles all over the world and i just thought to myself you know what that's not the life i want and that's why i went out to do it to to get into tv production because that's what i wanted to do i wanted to write so that's where it starts mm -hmm. then it's all about planning so right from the beginning of henna gaijin i had this idea i've had an idea in my head for years all about exactly what you you mentioned mm. the japan that we see on normal tv is not the japan i know mm. i want to much more interesting i'd love to go to that japan sometime though <laughs> <laughs> Before I came up on, on holiday here, I was, I was watching a big TV channel, I won't name it because I'm trying to pitch with them at the moment, and there were a couple of guys tra traveling around Japan, they look at vending machines, they go to the Skiji market, yeah. they make fun of Japanese signs in English, um, Crazy you know, yeah. They eat fugu fish. Is it fugu? What's the yeah, poisonous yeah, fugu, fish? Yeah, yeah, taking their life in their hands. You know, Did they been, die? It's, no, they didn't die. Damn, yeah. damn, they never died. They didn't even like it. Seriously, at some point you kind of lose the tension and the thrill of the year when, when not a single documentary maker any fugu has ever died. Uh, what's the point? <laughs> so so to, to me, that's where it started. Yeah. Um, and it's about planning. So I had this idea of what I wanted to see. Yeah. And I wanted to... So it was... There's going to be a big cut here. No, there's not. I don't. Yes, I'm is. lazy. This is just. Uh... To me, it all starts with the planning. So I started yeah. with um, with deciding what I wanted to talk about and yeah. deciding who it was that I was going to talk to. Yeah. Then I went. You didn't talk to me. I you did didn't. actually try and well, get you, you. Yeah, I was actually out of the country. I did actually I didn't, try and get you. He didn't want to talk to me. He just came <laughs> to Japan. He a lot of stuff. You were too big for me at that point. <laughs> you go, oh, no, you, YouTube channel startup. Hey, I, yeah. I told my agent, you know, give Ace all the time he needs. <laughs> I, I swear the, wire, the wire lines of communication got crossed. Okay, yeah. Actually, in episode one yeah. of Anna Gaijin, yeah. show me equals passion. Yes. The Singaporean guy Aldred, yeah. who was very, he was cool. I loved. He took us to the steampunk party. Yeah, yeah. I was in my head. I was thinking that was going to be you telling us, introducing us to Japan. So anyway, Sorry. we start off with that. <laughs> yes. I wrote a script. Yep. Um, generally, scripts when you're talking about something like this turn out to be complete. You you, you don't use them at all. But what it does for me, that I believe, is that it gives you a roadmap. Yeah. And as soon as you get on set, I know that when I come to talk to you today, I know generally what I want to talk about. Yeah. And then, but we come and we end up talking about something else because we've got this roadmap, but the roadmap allows us to take a detour off. Right. And if we see something interesting over here, we can go over here and we can come back. Mm -hmm. That's right. You want to yes. say something? Don't I you? think that <laughs> I think that having a script is a really important point. You should always no, no. I I, I do believe in the script. Yeah. Because it gives you a roadmap. You don't necessarily end up. It's never going to be word for word, and you're never going to have the, exactly the same show. But yeah. I do know in that first series when I talked about Ricky Dozan, yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah. in the episode three, that was in the script. Sure. When I talked at the beginning of episode one about how. Tokyo had been flattened twice in the last 100 years. That was in the That's script. That's an important point. So you plan all four of the episodes before yep. all shot, all scripted, before you even... Before I set foot in the, uh, where, wherever we're shooting it, yep. there's, it's all scripted out. Um, disclaimer here, though, we did not do that for the Singapore episodes. Okay. Because we knew the... We, we were in Singapore already. Right. But when we're coming to Tokyo, yeah. we've only got one week to shoot the thing. We get can't come back and get something. Yeah. So... That was important for me. Yeah. That's all about planning. Once we're on set, yeah. we work with, it's just Nick, the cameraman, yeah. and myself, Nick Talbot, great guy, Australian, eh, mm. but cool guy no otherwise. No one's perfect. But no you know. one's perfect. You can't blame him. Blame his parents. Uh, but um, so what we've worked out a system yeah. whereby he's on camera and sound yeah. and interview is the most important thing for us we come in we yeah. get the interview and we we've done a setup so that we can do it really really quickly mm. we, we we get the natural reactions of people as we're talking to them yeah um, once we've got the interview all the way through I'm thinking about okay what is the story and it's starting to form in my head yeah and so because of that if we were doing it in here for instance we'd be shooting around we'd be seeing We'd uh, see the lights, we'd see the cameras, we'd see the, 
the all the mess that's down here in front of us. Boiler room, everything boiler room, like that. everywhere, pipes, water, everything. It's crazy. So once, so we're starting to think about the story, mm. um, and we're getting as much footage as we can around it, so that we can illustrate the story. So it's just like writing a book yeah. and having pictures alongside it. We want to illustrate it. Right. Metaphors are cool. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, Coloring and uh, all that sort of. I like to see, you know, girls in tights beating each other up as the metaphor. For and something. that's got nothing to do with his old job before he got. No, this is the you're into wrestling, you mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's something about Junichiro Tanazaki, you know, he, was, he, he liked girls in tights too, I think. Yeah? But nothing wrong with that. Nothing any, wrong with anyway, that. so that's when the story is starting to form. As soon as, uh, and then we get the B-roll around yeah. town and everything so we can illustrate it. As soon as we get back to the editing um, to the editing stage, to be honest with you, I actually throw away the script at that point and I start, yeah. I start writing and editing together. Yeah. Uh, so you write again after it's yeah. done, while yeah. you're editing? Yeah. Wow. I don't, I think this is why doing the YouTube way, yeah. it does work. Yeah. If we were doing this in the commercial yeah. scene, I would be having to write a script, get it approved by the network, yeah. get it approved by a committee of people, yeah. and then you're trying to fit things together. Yeah, plugging the, 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 the filling in the pieces yeah. for the, that, that are preset. I just love the way that I can sit there and I can edit and I can write together at the same time, and I think that actually gets more out of it for me. I, when we came back from Tokyo, I said to Nick, I felt that we didn't leave anything on the um, the editing on, on the edit floor. Yeah. That we squeezed every little bit out of it. Okay, and we are going to talk about this. In fact, the next episode is going to be on the commercial creative process versus the YouTube creative process. But let me just tell you, that's all very interesting. That what you just told me, or whatever. But I can tell you, for all the YouTube geeks who saw that series and they asked, "How did you make that?" Not a single person was thinking about planning. Not a single person was thinking about scripting. <laughs> Not a single person was thinking about rewriting during the editing process. Everyone's thinking, what was the camera you were using? Uh, well, and... that's fair enough. That's fair enough because that gives you a nice quality. So what, what was the camera? XF300. Okay, that's it. That's... Sony. Sony. <laughs> <laughs> but see, so the first, this is the thing, you know, we're, we're geeks with toys and gadgets figuring out how to use them. We're coming at it from that angle a lot of the time whereas you're coming at it from the actual creative thing. So it is interesting. The first thing people wanted to know is, and, and the sound, was the sound built in mic, or did you have something plugged into the camera, or was the sound recorded separately, or how did you do the sound? Okay, yeah, actually, that's a good question. One thing that I like to do when I'm editing, because I'm editing it myself, the best way to do it yeah. would be to record the sound separately, Yeah. Um, and then sync it up, and you, you get it, like, we're using the, um, the lapel mics here, that's what we did use those yeah. here in Tokyo. But when we, for instance, when we went to the steampunk party, yeah. we just used a boom mic, which right. you see in the shop there. Yeah. And all the way through boom. the Singapore episode, it's exactly the same. I'm using the boom mic everywhere I go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The reason we decided to do that was just it's easier. We're pumping the sound directly into the camera. Yeah. So you are recording into the camera at least. Yeah. You're not mixing up the sound totally separately later. So so when I go into the edit process, I'm actually editing. I'm taking one shot yeah and I'm cutting it all up yeah and so then that's why b-roll is so important to me yeah because I need to be able to cover up all those cuts I'm Save taking ways. out every um and ah I'm taking out every oh. unfortunate <laughs> pause I'm tr most of the time these people in the video they're talking very quickly and they're yeah. very succinct and they're coming straight to the point right but that's not how we talk I remember when I started making videos in Japanese the, one of the first English comments I ever got in the video was, uh, what is that word ano? Because yeah. you say it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you can't be, you're not very good at Japanese because you say ano too much. And all the Japanese people say, no, no, it's good. It sounds more real that way. But Well, it is. It is more real because that's how we talk. We don't, we don't talk succinctly like you hear on TV. No, no, we talk. So, so okay, so come back for next week. Uh, we're going to get into a little bit, i hear more about how Ace is trained to think creatively and get ideas through a commercial creation process and, and how that, a little bit as we talked about before, the process of getting an idea into a video, into production in a commercial background and how that compares with YouTube mm. and, and maybe what you've learned from the process of doing a YouTube video yeah. based against your background. So that's going to be next week. 
So endless interesting topics. So hang around and uh, see you next week. Peace. We are hopelessly over time on this ship. Okay.